Do you want to hear what I ate today? What you ate today? Yeah. Probably not because it's going to make me nauseous, but go ahead. So before work, I had Venom McGriddle. Okay. Got to work, I had a coconut uh, Red Bull. Oh, okay. I got a... I had three chocolate bars that I found in the break room. Oh, huh, like yeah. full size? Yep. Nice, nice. Yeah, Gertrude yeah. Hawk. Oh, ooh. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And then... Uh, I understand that. I got uh, some Froyo. Too much. Froyo. Way too many toppings. Too many. Gotta and keep then, it simple. And uh, then... Went to McDonald's. Again? Yep. Twice? Mm -hmm. Okay. What'd you get there? Fries. Fries. And a oh. Coke. And a Coke. And then uh, I had a... just had a cookie? Just had a cookie. Cookie? Yeah. A full size cookie. Full cookie. Full like cookie. Size of your face cookie. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So, all right. Well, um, yeah. So, hi. Sorry about that. Just kind of wrapping things up for the day here. My name's Frank. Welcome to Aborigine Reptiles. Um, we're going to do a little bit more of a serious video tonight. Um, I, I wanted to talk about this topic for quite some time and just haven't had the time to do it. Uh, we've been a little busy, so it's been a couple of weeks since we had a, a video. Uh, spring breeding season's in full swing here, so we're a little bit crazy. Um, but I definitely want to take a few minutes to make this video. So if you've tuned in, thank you, and uh, please hold tight. It's not a long video, but I think it's a very important video for anyone interested or in the reptile hobby. Um... Reptile shows are happening right now, more and more opening up because of all the, you know, the pandemics. Hopefully we're near the end, um, uh, at the light end of the tunnel, everyone keeps saying, hopefully we're there. And uh, so we'll see more and more reptile shows and expos opening up. It's also spring, you know, so the, it is the season um, as we, we call it in the industry. And um, it's very exciting, but something also that's been coming up a lot lately um, if any of you who are really into the reptile hobby and, and watch any videos on YouTube is uh, about all the legislation that's happening out there all over across the United States. Uh, there's a lot happening here in New York, uh, specifically around shipping reptiles uh, in and out of the state, traveling in to expos to sell reptiles, uh, bringing in the reptiles, displaying reptiles. Um, so... This topic that we're going to talk about kind of intertangles really well expos and legislation and what you can do to help support. Um, expos are great because if you haven't been to one, go to one. Um, but what they do is they bring together a wide group of people. They expose a ton of people who are not um, reptile owners yet. Maybe they're going, going there to become a first time reptile owner um, and it's a great place to find a reasonably priced reptile and buying it from a local uh, vendor who is very knowledgeable. So it's a great idea to buy from uh, a reptile if you're looking for one at an expo, as opposed to any of the big box stores. Um, but what it also, even people who don't want to buy a reptile, they just want to go see something. It is an amazing thing to behold. Uh, depending on where you go throughout the country, there's some amazing reptile expos out there. And it's truly a great experience. So if you haven't been to one, go to one. If you have been to one, keep going to them. Um, and this video is not to talk bad about any expos. Um, it's really not intended to uh, talk bad about anyone specifically. I'm going to be kind of talking about a general group of individuals. Um, this is just my opinion. Um, I am not some big YouTuber or some big influencer in the reptile community. But for those of you who see this, hopefully it resonates and you know you can spread the message and share this video. So when you go to a reptile expo, um, there's basically three categories of vendors um, when we're talking about livestock, um, not getting into the dry goods or anything of that nature. Uh, you have the hobbyist breeder like myself, um, someone who probably has a day job and does this to support their hobbies, very passionate about a certain type or group of animals um, and just loves to work with them. And the money they make from it basically goes right back into the hobby and allows them to keep doing what they love. These are great because they're typically small, um, small batch reptile breeders who have some great genetics at a very affordable price. I think a lot of my animals have come from small um, hobbyist breeders 
because again, they really take pride in what they work with and really put a lot of time and dedication into their animals. Um, so those are, you can tell them usually they're small tables, they don't have all the glitz and glamour, the big signs, the big lights. Um, they might not have as many tables set up, um, but they do have some really great animals. They love to talk and, and share their experiences and their knowledge with you. Um, and you can get a great price on a great animal. Um, then you have the professional breeders. These are the people who, um, the guys and girls who do this for a living, um, typically. And they have hundreds if not thousands of animals. Uh, they know everything there is to know about the animals that they specialize in. And they have a wide breadth of um, variety as far as uh, genetics and what they work with, great knowledge, great customer service typically. They have websites so you can connect with them before and after the expos. Um, very supportive if they're a good company. And again, some amazing animals. The prices are a little bit higher, but you get what you pay for. There's some great, great animals. The third one is one I kind of want to focus on, and that's the wholesaler slash broker slash importer. Now, these people have been around forever. In fact, they're some of the first reptile hobby, um, the grandfathers of the hobby. Reptiles had to be imported. They still are imported to this day. And importing reptiles is very important in terms of making sure we have good genetic diversity within our, po in our uh, you know, captive populations. Um, there are some animals, um, the crested gecko, one of the most popular geckos and reptiles in the industry, was once um, nearly endangered. And because of taking some of those animals from the wild, we have what we have today, which are hundreds of thousands of crested geckos. So I'm not deterring people um, or, or talking bad about wild caught animals. I do not recommend buying wild caught animals unless you're a long term experienced reptile keeper who has a reason to bring in wild caught animals. Again, you're taking these animals out of their native habitat. You're funding potentially not that great uh, economic structure globally. Um, and a lot of these animals don't fare well in captivity. So if you if you don't have any experience with wild caught animals, don't purchase them. That's my own personal opinion. Always buy captive bred when you can. Um, and that's kind of where my, my, my flaw starts with these guys. So you can tell who they are. They typically have these huge long tables, multiple tables, hundreds of deli cups, containers of all sorts and sizes. And these animals are crammed into them. Um, and by crammed into them, obviously when you go to a reptile show, you're gonna see animals in lots of small, you know, displays or containers. But for the hobbyist breeder and a lot of the professional breeders, these are temporary. They're only in those containers maybe a day, couple, two or three days max if they're traveling. And reptiles are a hardy bunch. For the most part, most reptiles can handle that level of temperature fluctuation and or food or water um, deprivation. So that's not the concern. These brokers and wholesalers, you'll notice if you go to any shows in a certain area, they'll be at a different show every weekend. And those animals are in the same containers. And a lot of them, I've seen chameleons that are in deli cups. Now, chameleons, if you know anything about them or work with them, um, they, they're easily stressed and they should never be in a deli cup on their side crammed in there with nothing to grab onto, no hydration. Um, and they, their table is mixed with captive bred animals, with wild caught animals. Some are half dying, some are healthy. Um, but these guys will buy, um, say a whole clutch of animals from a, a hobbyist breeder or someone who accidentally bred animals and they, they don't know what to do with them. They'll give them a, a fair price, they'll buy the whole clutch, they'll take them, they'll package them into little deli cups, they'll mark them up, and they'll sell them. So it's no different than most reptile shops or pet shops or big box stores. Um, the only problem is these animals are typically kept in deli cups or subpar conditions for their entire stay with the, with the broker or um, wholesaler. They're trying to turn these animals over quick, um, and that's, you know, that's tough. And the reason I'm speaking against them a little bit is because when you go to expos, all of those people I talked about earlier who've never been to a reptile expo, who don't know anything about reptiles, who maybe um, might be animal advocates of various groups, um, are going to see these things. And they may not know anything about reptiles, but I don't think you really need to know anything about reptiles 
to not be okay with some of the conditions that you see these animals piled up on top of each other, crammed into you know, small containers with multiple animals in those containers, um, and just stacked, 5, 10, 15 high, um, and they just throw them in boxes and go on to the next show the next week. Um, and that's, that's disgusting. And honestly, you know, I don't care. It, it, it's my opinion. I don't know any of you out there that would really think that's a great idea. Um, and a lot of these guys are just, they're in it for the money. They're making a quick turnover, making a few couple, you know, a few bucks here and there. Um, and it's just a really disgusting gross side of the hobby that, um, has grown more. It used to be a thing back 20, 25 years ago when I got into this. It started to go away when everyone really concentrated on captive breeding efforts, but it has seen a resurgence lately. Um, and I have a theory to why that is. And, you know, this is where I hope things can kind of, you know, take a turn as we go forward. Um, but as many of you know, if you go to any of, any of you who are reptile um, enthusiasts, if you go to a reptile expo or you've been to one in the last couple of years, I think you'll notice that they're dominated largely by ball pythons, um, you know, rachidactylus specialists, crestids, uh, lichianus, um, gargoyles, things of that nature, maybe some boas, maybe some leopard geckos, and that's it. Um, you very rarely find specialty or diverse captive breeding um, hobbyist breeders and or professionals, right? I get why that is. They're, you know, ball pythons and crestids and all of them are easy to care for, super popular, coming in a million different colors. People love them. Um, the downside of that is it's become difficult for, there's a lot of other reptile enthusiasts out there who aren't into ball pythons. I myself, I, I don't care for ball pythons. I don't really care that much for crested geckos or lichianus or, or even leopard geckos. I think they're beautiful. I think they're great animals, but they're just not my thing. And that puts me as a hobbyist in a difficult situation. I'm going to go to a reptile expo and see nothing but that. So I have two choices. I either don't continue to go to reptile expos. Um, I don't end up supporting anything because when I go to that reptile expo, I don't always buy animals, but I do buy supplies usually. I buy a couple of things here and there, and I'm supporting all various types of vendors. My kids who come with me, they might pick up a, a pet animal. Um, here or there too. So by me not going there, um, multiply that times 100,000 times of people who kind of get sick of seeing the same old thing. Um, and, you know, that can have a big impact. The other way is if I do go, say I'm looking for a carpet python. There's not a lot of carpet python specialty breeders out there. There's, you know, a couple dozen of them that I know of across the country. So that means these wholesalers, these, these importers, they have a niche to fill. They are the, the table that brings you a wide variety of every type of reptile. And honestly, if you're there and you had in your mind you're going to pick up a Uromastix and there's no Uromastix breeders there or anyone who specializes in them, and you go past, past this broker table and they have this big pile of, you know, half-dead Saharan Uromastix crammed into a 10-gallon tank, you're going to be thinking about getting one of those. You're, you're going to think, well, pet shop syndrome. I, I, can, I can take one of those home. I can get them better. I, I think I, could, I can turn them around. Um, and whether you can or can't is besides the point. You supported that person. He's going to buy it again. He's going to buy more. He's going to show up again. Um, so I think there's two ways to look at this. One, I don't recommend um, to support these type of vendors. Um, all these reptile shows have... A, typically have a vendor list who are going to be at the show. Do your homework. Look who's going to be there. Reach out ahead of time. Start doing some good communication, some back and forth if you're looking for any specific types of animals. Um, many times the pro or hobbyist breeders that are going to be there, they might have something that they weren't even going to bring to the show, but because they talked to you, they may have it and might bring it there. Um, but try to buy captive bred whenever possible. You should really have no reason to buy wild caught animals unless you're looking to do a specific breeding project or work with those types of animals. If you really love, say, painted agamas and you just have to have one, there are people who captive breed them uh, out there or they've been brought in um, and captive hatched so you can find them. So A, don't support those vendors. I'm sorry, I don't like speaking out against and telling people not to support other people, but these vendors really harm our hobby because when people from outside the hobby see these things, 
This is what gets on social media. This is where pictures are taken. This is where videos are taken. And then all of a sudden animal rights groups get into it and, and see poor representation of these poor animals. Um, and people are called in to see these, these expos. And then this is how it, you know, it, it, it snowballs into legislation against animal cruelty and what we're doing. Even though the vast majority of the reptile hobby are great people who love animals and will do everything for them to make their lives better, um, these, these people don't help that cause. So don't support these people. If you really need an animal that bad, always buy captive bred. Um, try not to support people who don't know anything about them. They're just throwing prices on animals, looking to flip them over real quick out of the back of their car and move on to the next show. Um, the second part of it is support diversity. There's a lot of great hobbyist breeders out there um, and professional breeders that work with some diverse diverse groups of reptiles, um, boas and carpet pythons and uromastics and uh, rare geckos and rare skinks and everything in between, um, turtles and tortoises and everything. Look to support those people. Try to something new. Find something different. Um, you know, I think there's pl there's way more than enough ball python, crested gecko, lichianus, and leopard gecko supporters out there. Um, and again, I'm not hating on any of those breeders. It's just, there's a lot of them. Um, so support the people who are trying something different and keeping the hobby different. It's why I did what I do. I, I work with only Australian reptiles because I kept seeing them become less and less popular in, in terms of when you go to a show, you didn't see them as many, or they're just sporadic here and there outside of your bearded dragon. So I made it a a vow to myself and to the animals to keep these species alive in the hobby and support them and hopefully grow them. Um, so support diversity, don't support the big wholesaler importers, uh, and support your local expo and support all your local hobbyists and professional breeders. They rely on um, your support and funding to keep it going and support our hobby. And um, if you're not a member, become a member US ARC. Uh, links are below. Check that out. They help support legislation. I'm, I'm sure you see it on all the reptile uh, channels, but it's for real. So make sure to do that. And then all the things we talked about today are how else you can support it outside of just making a donation to some, um, some group. Take action while you're out there at your next reptile expo. Sorry this was long-winded, but it was something really important to me, and it's a video that I feel that needs to be out there. Comment below. Reach out if you have any questions or thoughts. I'd love to have some good conversation with this. And uh, I promise the next video will be way more interesting with actual reptiles. Again, breeding season happening. So a lot of exciting things, eggs are being laid, uh, new groupings and pairings, getting some new animals in, selling some breeders off. So a lot of amazing, exciting things. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.